Hello everyone, today we will be working on converting this toaster oven into a DIY SMD reflow oven. As you might know, I'm working on more and more PCB projects lately and it would be really nice to have the capability of assembling SMD PCBs at home. Yeah, it would be great to have the capability here so that I can more easily prototype and maybe even use this for production for some of the PCBs I sell on my Etsy store. So yeah, for that we will be converting this Breville toaster oven I got on eBay. And for converting this, we will be using a, a Controlio 3 SMD reflow oven conversion kit. So I'll, I will show that later in this video. So yeah, uh, let's begin. But before that, thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. PCBWay offers cheap, fast and high quality PCB prototyping services. I've used their PCB services in the past for multiple different projects on this channel, including before I was sponsored by them and I was always happy with the PCBs I got. They have also sent some PCBs for this video so that we can test the reflow oven by assembling those PCBs with some components, so definitely stay tuned for that. But if you want more information about PCB Way now, there is a link in the description below. So let's start by taking a closer look at the oven I chose for this. I chose this Breville, I'll put the model number on the screen right now, toaster oven for this. I got this on eBay for I think 80 bucks or something like that, including shipping. And uh, yeah, the reason I chose this is well, two reasons. One, this is bigger, which isn't necessarily a good thing because it means uh, the heat in there might not be as even. You want the heat in the center to be as close to the heat on the edges. But of course, bigger also means bigger capacity. So if I can get away with that, bigger is better. And uh, I think I should be able to based on the second reason. Since someone used a very similar toaster oven on an, on the, for an uh, Control Year 3 SMD reflow oven built on EV block forum, so yeah, and he, appa he apparently had uh, good luck with it. And I think this should work well for that as well. It's not the exact same model, but as far as I can tell, it's pretty much the same thing. So I guess we will see. Uh, this uh, this has four heater elements. That's, that's another reason why the EV block person chose this. There are two heaters on the bottom and two more uh, on the top. I don't know how well you can see that, but we will have to open this up later in the video so you will be able to see them a bit better. Uh, the reason this was a bit uh, cheaper on eBay is because, well, this was a display unit according to the description and it has some things on it, so one on the top, uh, a bigger one on the back side, so yeah, it's not in the world's greatest condition, but uh, as far as I can tell, I turned all the heaters on just to test, uh, everything as far as I can tell works, so we should be able to use this. And uh, as I said, we will be using a Control Year 3 uh, controller and their kit for converting this into a Control Year 3 uh, SMD reflow oven. So uh, before we start working on this, let me also show you what's included in the kit. So here is everything that's included in the Control Year 3 kit. I, n I realize this is not the greatest angle for this, so I will be going over some of the components here. But yeah, this is what's included in the Control Year 3 convection oven kit. They also have a regular oven kit and yes I'm not using a convection oven but the reason I got the convection oven kit is because it comes with extra insulation and uh, I'll talk more about why that's important in a second but in the convection oven kit you also get a cheap crappy SSR for controlling the convection fan but again what I'm using is not a convection oven so we won't be using that let's start with the main controller so this thing this uh, has the MCU on this that runs everything so you have a touch screen here on the back side you have a bunch of screw terminals these are for controlling the heaters which go into these SSRs I'll show them in a second you also get this injection molded filling box but I think we will need to drill a hole on this for routing the wires uh, for the controller you also need a micro SD card so you get an extra micro SD card here and actually that's not a micro SD card, you don't need a micro SD card, you need a full size SD card. So you get a micro SD card with a full size SD card adapter. Anyway, uh, same idea. Anyway, uh, you get this cheap uh, crappy feeling 5 volt power supply. So this is one of my first, uh, first, one of the first things that I don't really like about this kit. Uh, this is a cheap, like no name brand, 5 volt 2 amp power supply. And the way you use this is you cut this end of this and then screw it into the screw terminals on the control here because this doesn't have a barrel jack. And then this side you attach wires to the prongs of this instead of plugging this into a wall and then just wire it to the power input of the toaster oven. I'm really not a fan of that idea. Like I wish they just included uh, like a low current, a low power, 5 volt, meanwhile power supply. They're not that expensive. They're going to be more expensive than this for sure but 
you know, they're not that expensive. You also get this PCB in the box. This actually has no electronics. This is just like a bracket. It's just made out of PCB material. And uh, this is for screwing into uh, the servo motor in here. And it also has this arm. And all this uh, system is just for opening the door of the toaster oven. And you need to do that to let some of the air out when you're cooling down the toaster oven. It's part of the uh, reflow cycle. Anyway, you also get a grommet for routing the wires too. You get a bunch of uh, wires in here, but also you get this uh, heater cartridge. This looks like a giant 3D printer heater cartridge, but this is 400 uh, watts and 110 volts, so just a wire to the mains power. This is an extra heater. You do need the thing to reach higher temperatures and you need it to reach higher temperatures quickly, so you do need an extra heater usually. And uh, yeah, they include one in the kit. You also get a thermocouple here. I think it's a Type K thermocouple. Don't quote me on that, but I think it is. And that's for obviously measuring the uh, chamber temperature inside the thing. And other than that, the rest of what's in here is just wiring and sleeving and stuff like that. It's just a bunch of zip ties, nothing that important. Going back to the SSRs, you get three more SSRs in here. Again, some uh, no-name brand, not a fan of that, but it is what it is, I guess. A bunch of small aluminium plates on this side, a bigger one on this side, probably as meant to be the heatsink for this. Probably, I don't know, don't quote me on that, we'll see as we assemble it. And a bunch of ring terminals for the SSRs. You also get this C-shaped aluminium plate, and maybe this is the heatsink. I, again, I don't know, we'll see when we assemble this, but yeah, another aluminium piece. There is also this, what feels like a thermal pad, again, assuming for heat sinking the SSRs, we'll see. This is the PCB tray. So this is one of the most important parts in there. You do need uh, something that's, uh, that transfers heat efficiently when you place the PCBs on here for the reflow. Again, this is aluminum, it uh, distributes heat much better than steel. Theoretically, copper or something like that would be even better than this, but aluminum in theory should be uh, should work fine too. And this is also a very specific thickness according to their documentation. Uh, apparently, this thickness works best. Uh, I'm just quoting them, I don't know. But that's also included in the kit. They also recommend you buy extra ones, but I didn't do that yet. We'll see. As for the insulation, um, you get a bunch of floor and something shield to insulation for the inside of the uh, toaster oven or convection oven in this case I guess since this is the convection oven kit and uh, again with the convection oven kit you get extra for the insulation that goes between the inner and outer walls of the toaster oven you have this I think ceramic blanket or something like that I don't remember what it's called you also get this reflector gold uh, reflective tape and this uh, Again, just for sealing gaps, I guess, probably for the door tape. You also get RTV, so this is for sealing the gaps in the metal inner frame, like inner chamber of the toaster oven, so, you know, just to prevent from air from escaping, that's the idea with this. You also get a bunch of paperwork, so you get a DI sticker, a Wizu business card shape thing with their GitHub link and whatnot. Wizu is the company behind Controlia 3. Uh, you get a PCB way brochure. This, like this, this being included in the kit has nothing to do with the PCB way sponsorship on this video. This was included in the kit, and just showing what's included in the kit has nothing to do with the video. But yeah, just a PCB way ad, and you also get a PCB way ten dollar coupon. Um, I'm not going to claim this, so if you're lucky, you might be able to claim this. So good luck. You also get a. Um, Piece of paper with a bunch of instructions basically goes tells you to go to their website for the actual written instructions but i don't like working from a computer screen so if you want to call this a waste of paper or wink or whatever but i i like looking at paper instructions so i printed the whole thing and uh, yeah i will be using this when assembling the kit you also get one single band-aid now i mean it's a nice touch that this is included but i cut myself when i was opening the box so zero out of ten it didn't help me uh, don't don't buy kidding of course but yeah i did actually cut myself when opening the box so yeah i imagine i will be cutting myself a lot more once i start working on the metal frame of the toaster so yeah uh, maybe include more i don't know but it's a nice touch up of course i'm not complaining about that so 
Anyway, that's everything that's included in the kit. Let's start working on the toaster oven. And the first step is to disassemble the toaster oven. I removed the dip drip tray from here and the normal wire, uh, I guess food tray or whatever you call this from the inside of the toaster oven. And then I also started uh, working on removing the feet. I managed to only remove two of these though, so uh, this is symmetrical, so I'm only showing you one side, but it's the same thing. I managed to remove the feet that's on this side. Those feet were held in fuck. Those feet were held in place by two screws, and uh, there was another hole here that was for a rivet, so you can see the remnant of the rivet. I had to drill that out, but uh, that those two, the one, you know, these two, the rear ones from the front of the toaster, were easy enough to remove. These two, though. Uh, they, I can only find two screws for these, so if I zoom in, zoom in, there was a screw going in through here, and another one going through here, and no, there isn't anything hidden behind this metal, I guess you could call it a washer, nothing hidden behind that, so, yeah, uh, I removed those, but uh, it's, something is still keeping these in place, and I don't know what, so, anyway, uh, from that, I wanted to remove these because just in case they are holding the side panels in place, which is definitely possible, but since I couldn't remove those, I'm on to uh, trying to remove the side and top panel, like that's a single sheet metal assembly, so there are a bunch of screws holding that in place that I had to remove, but it's kind of stubborn, and yeah, I spent about a half an hour just on this panel alone, and uh, yeah, those band-aids. Actually, I didn't use the ones that were that came in the box. I should say one, not one, since it's a single one. But yeah, I needed multiple. It was kind of bad. But anyway, uh, try to remove those. Uh, remove this panel, and it's not coming off. So yeah, I can't really find what's holding it in place. So that's the thing. But yeah, this is the sort of challenge that you should expect with a Control U3 build. I don't know if the Black and Decker one is easier to remove uh, disassemble or not. It's possible. It, it's also possible that this, these, uh, you know, bad damage parts are kind of you know, keeping it in place. That's also possible if they're if they're getting stuck on something, for example. But yeah, uh, it's just something you should expect. Anyway, the next step after I disassemble this will be to do the RTV in the inner toaster chamber, which we will do. I will show that in the video too. And uh, I will be using this Promotex red RTV that I have, so I'm not going to use the one that's. Uh, included in the kit, mostly because uh, the, I already have this and this tube and it's already opened so might as well use this instead of opening yet another tube. It's rated for the same temperatures and uh, it's Permatex so it should be good too, probably better than the one included in the kit because I haven't never even heard of that brand but theoretically, theoretically the one included in the uh, kit should be fine too, just you know I already have an open tube, that's the main reason. Anyway, uh, I'll be back once I figure out how to disassemble this thing. I'll be taking a break for now, but uh, in my time tomorrow, your time, next clip in this video, uh, it'll probably be opened and I'll talk about how I did that and then, yeah, we'll start working on the RTV stuff. So I took a break for about a day and then when I came back, I was finally able to remove the sides and as you can see, I also did the uh, RTV inside. I know it looks like a bad cop show, uh, you know, murder scene, but yeah, that's just red RTV silicon and I think I sealed the air gaps pretty well. But uh, yeah, before that, you might remember that I was talking about these feet not being easy to remove. Well, uh, and if you, might, you might even remember me saying that uh, I checked under the washer and there were no hidden screws, well, under the washer. And I don't know how this looks on camera, but uh, this is a rubber, you know, thing that's is between the plastic feet and the actual surface to protect the surface, whatever. Uh, the color of this is very close to this. And uh, yeah, under the uh, metal washer, which, you know, the screw that, uh, there was a screw that went through this, screwed into the plastic. Under that, all you see is the hole for that and two more holes for these plastic pegs. And because the color looks the same, I thought that was you know, that was it. There wasn't another layer, but yep, two more screws under that. Another thing I did is, this is not part of the uh, Control U3 kit, but I wanted a power button. So I mounted this here, cut the sheet metal here, bent the things inwards and just slightened the thing here. The switch that is and then epoxied it in place and yeah uh, that should be 
good enough I think so it feels like it's staying in place nicely so yeah I think it'll uh, work pretty well also wired the uh, power that's coming through the power cord into that too so I just need to wire the power from here to whatever else I wire that to I also removed the controller from here and uh, the reason I completely removed the controller because you might think well you might as well keep it in place it's not hurting anything and uh, usually you'd be right but in this case it is actually hurting uh, you can see that with the controller which sits in this plastic box the space in here gets a lot more limited and I like a large electronics chamber generally speaking so uh, after doing a bit more RTV ink on the thing just noticed a few more cracks that I sealed and I moved on to uh, doing the SSRs so these are the solid state relays yeah uh, I did the SSR aluminium uh, uh, sheet mounted thing here and also started planning the electronics in general and uh, I have a few things to say about the components that are included in this kit first of all I guess start with the positive I like that the screws included are decent quality and they actually have the uh, you know, those shock uh, the stuff that makes the screws not come loose um, they have a name and I know it but I forgot whatever I like that they are included uh, that's I think all post everything I positive I can say about this uh, the SSRs included are 25 amps I think based on the 25 here but I'm going I'm just saying I think because it doesn't really matter this is some no-name SSR if you've ever seen these opened like different no-name brands I don't know if I've seen this particular no-name brand but they don't really feel high quality anyway the inside of this is just basically nothing so this is just crap quality SSRs I don't like seeing these I will use these because uh, yeah, they, they will work but uh, they don't really inspire confidence and yeah I'm glad that I added that extra power switch on the back so at least I can you know, uh, cut the power to these uh, when this is when I'm not using the reflow oven at least. Uh, and uh, yeah, that purple and black uh, blue thing that I showed earlier in the video during the unboxing wasn't exactly an unboxing, but I guess an overview. That is a thermal pad for these, so uh, it's nice that that's included. So you get two of these aluminium sheets, and uh, you also get this C-shaped one and. You're basically left with that you have to figure out how to do the electronics on your own which does make sense but uh, because uh, you know every toaster oven is different but and you know they don't they don't necessarily say you have to use that specific black and decker unit and as you know I'm not but you know it definitely would have been nice to see a few pre-drilled holes so that uh, for example I didn't have to drill holes for the SSRs uh, yeah that definitely would have been nice also a bit clearer documentation in terms of how these sheets are meant to be used would be nice this one is what i used i drilled the holes for these and i bent this so i will be mounting this on my toaster oven vertically like this and uh yeah the, the way the reason i can do that is because my toaster oven is bigger than the black and decker one i also drilled an extra hole here for mounting and uh, speaking of not being a fan of the chosen components the 5 volt power supply for the controller this is what you're meant to do with that just uh, use the included uh, spade terminals and just jam them in there which it doesn't even fit actually I mean you can make it work with pliers and just kind of you know loosening this a bit but yeah it doesn't even fit on here I almost uh, ordered the uh, meanwhile RS15 5 for this but what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to use the insides of that and uh, I'm going to design a 3D printed case for this at least I won't have to zip tie it in place that's the idea but in terms of safety yeah uh, this is not ideal but uh, I mean I'm using crappy Chinese SSRs so these are definitely a bigger risk than this so yeah uh, I'm going to use this I think I just don't want to bother with buying a separate thing and waiting for the delivery of that that's the main thing not the act of buying it or the $10 price of that but yeah I'm going to design a 3d printed mount for this so that's the idea so I have a bunch of wagos here uh, I will be using these two 2215 pole wagos for power distribution for live and neutral so these two will well, this side is the power so these two will sit here not this in this orientation but whatever they will sit in here and then the plus uh, there are some plastic clips you can print for these that keep these in place well so I'll use those and then I'll design a 
uh, holder that's part of the same plastic part that keeps this in place there and after these after this i have uh, these cheap knockoff logos the reason i'm using these is because this is 5 volt cc the worst that can happen is electronics dying or most likely not working so yeah i might as well use the knockoff logos i have so i'll put these logos here and then you know connect this to these logos and uh, i'll run the power to the controller through these logos and also i'll add a 5 volt fan for cooling the electronics and yeah also connect these uh, connect that to these logos so that is the plan and here is what i designed for the 5 volt power supply just uh, stick the pcb in here just plastic clips here here and here and uh, this should keep it in place and then there are these three uh, spacers from the bottom so here here and a wider one here just because it fits and uh, those are just you know just to keep the pcb up here so that the components can fit in the uh, box area here so that you know capacitors transformers whatever they'll all be inside and only the back side of the pcb will be exposed and i'll cover the ac side with electrical tape these two on this side are five pin uh, wago holders two two ones and these two are three pin wago holders again two two ones not that cheap one i showed earlier and uh, dc side ac side so let's print this and take a look at the uh, printed part and here is the printed part this is the PCB that was uh, removed from this, so at least I don't have to, you know, solder or just crimp wires onto these and yeah, deal with that stuff. I still think this is a better solution, but ideally, if I didn't have to wait for the delivery of them, I'd just go with a Minoel RS-15.5 or some other power supply like that. Uh, the PCB in here is held in by clips, as I showed in the on the computer model, and I also added the electrical tape on top of here, so this is just to cover the exposed mains power AC stuff. Those are connected to the Wagos here. I use the 5-pin 221 Wagos here, so the middle three are for the SSRs, and the first one is for the power input, that's the case on both sides. This side I was planning on using these cheap Wagos as I talked about earlier in the video, but turns out there isn't really a model that I could easily find that uh, used these Wagos, and you know, I didn't really feel like designing anything since I already have the 3-pin uh, 221 Wagos for this side too, so yeah, I just used the uh, same 221 style Wagos. I guess it's somewhat symmetrical, so I guess it works for that too. Anyway, uh, this is for the DC side. On the bottom side, um, I will be using this VHP tape to mount this on the inside the toaster oven. So uh, yeah, let's continue working on the oven and I'll be back when there is more to show. So I did quite a bit since the last recording. As you can see, first of all, the chamber is now fully insulated-ish. So last time I showed this setting, all I did was seal the edges with our TV. Now, uh, uh, floor and tunnel shield 2 is applied to uh, the back side, the bottom, uh, half of the sides. That's as much as uh, as much insulation that was included, so I couldn't do the rest. But uh, also the top too. So uh, this is mostly insulated. This is actually better than what the guide suggests, which is just do the bottom, back, top, and the sides. Just it says to use just this uh, uh, gold foil tape for reflect the gold. I think is I think that's what it's called. Anyway. Uh, so I think I did a bit better than what the recommended is, but who knows, maybe there's a reason why they just recommend reflect the gold on the sides, I don't know. Anyway, uh, yeah, I did that. I also added the auxiliary heater in here. Now, uh, that heater is... Uh, I didn't do a perfect job with these uh, uh, ring screw things, so yeah, uh, this one is fine. This one, though... Don't look at it too closely. Uh, I, I think I stripped something down there, but yeah, the thing is, the, as I showed earlier in the video, the, this has a drip tray which I sealed with RTV in place now. The other person, the person on EV block, uh, he cut the drip tray part of it, just sealed the front and made the chamber larger, but I don't think that's a good idea. Mostly because, well, you're, uh, you're increasing the volume in there without actually increasing the effective uh, soldering area, so you're going to have a, a worse thermal profile based on that because you have to heat more air. So making it as small as possible makes uh, sense. There is also the p uh, pizza bulge on the back side, which uh, the uh, written guide recommends covering, which I did. And uh, that's also getting rid of the air inside. So yeah, I don't see a good reason to increase the air that's inside the heated chamber. So 
it made more sense for that. Another advantage of this was it made installing this uh, floor and tunnel shield too much easier. This is adhesive backed uh, insulation so as you can imagine sliding it under these things while also making sure it doesn't stick until it gets you know far enough back that's that would be a pain in the ass but since this strip tray is removable I just removed it applied it uh, put it in there and just uh, sealed it as I put it in there so yeah uh, no air should be able to escape and even if it does escape uh, the, the entire chamber is also sealed so you know if air it, escapes below the drip tray then the, that area is also sealed so yeah I, I did as much sealing as possible i used about a tube and a half of rtv so uh, yeah i also started using the rtv that was included in the box after i ran out of the permatex one that i have so yeah i think the insulation will work pretty well this should be safe enough to like um, you know this side wobbles but this side stays in place and this side the wires are keeping it in place so I don't think there's a safety concern here either, but yeah, it's kind of janky, so don't look at it too closely, I guess. Uh, moving on, I did the side electronics here as well, so I already showed you the SSR module, so that's now in place. I drilled a single hole on this steel plate and just screwed it in place. I uh, did the wiring to all the heating elements as well, they're all wired there. Back here, I also added a fan, so that's... Um, uh, I think 60 millimeter, something like that, fan. That's a 12 volt fan, not a 5 volt fan, but uh, 12 volt fans should run at 5 volts, just at a slower speed, which means quieter, which is also nice. So, yeah, uh, that fan should uh, help keep the electronics a bit cooler, mainly the SSRs is what I'm worried about. And uh, it also mounted the thing that I showed earlier in the video, the printed part. I mounted that on the uh, outer like the outer sheet metal part so that's here that's it's mostly mounted there because i couldn't figure out a better way to mount that so yeah it's going to be there and yeah it should all fit so it's just making wiring a bit more difficult than ideal but it'll work fine and uh, this is the control like where you have the normally have the controls i was going to completely remove that and 3d print a fan bracket but it has a lot of holes and it's kind of structural so yeah I didn't want to get rid of it but I also couldn't have that extra thickness so I uh, cut that here with a hacksaw and some uh, after that some kniving too and um, yeah just screw it in place after that but yeah with the controls removed and uh, yeah by getting rid of that plastic I had no way of installing the controls back again because you know you need that so with those removed it was looking really ugly so i decided to cover that in uh, black uh, duct tape but yeah that doesn't look great either i know but i think it looks uh, a bit better at least i don't know maybe i'll figure something out down the line but obviously this is just a functional thing not and yeah the primary focus isn't the looks i guess the next step will be to uh, finally put the uh, uh, fiberglass or whatever insulation on here uh, this stuff and uh, put the uh, outer uh, sheet metal cover on there and then we'll install the door and uh, we need to work on the electronics too so there is still a decent amount of work to do but yeah we're, we're making progress at least and that by the way I removed the door here obviously that's easy enough to install uh, just uh, there are two packs that go through this hole and this hole I don't know how much of that you can see on the camera and uh, there is a spring, uh, the spring that goes in here, attaches to the door around here, and uh, attaches to the frame back here. Probably can't see much of it, but yeah. Uh, anyway, it it uh, it is easy to remove and attach. That's I guess what's most important. The door. Oh, another thing. The door I also covered in this gold foil tape. Uh, that's also recommended in the guide. Uh, it helps you reflect as much of the heat back inside as possible. You just need a small cutout, small part of the window, so that then you can actually see what's going on inside the chamber, but that's about it. So uh, the ideal thing is to cover as much of this as possible. So that's what I did. Anyway, I'll be back once all this is installed back in place and we'll start working on the electronics. And the toaster oven is assembled again. As you can see, the side panel is uh, back on. 
and I also put the door back on here too so it's here and it opens just fine too the spring is in there too so it closes nicely too just have to push it a little bit to close it fully and that's because I added, uh, added some rubber foam uh, tape here to you know just just to seal the door the tape that was included in the box with the kit this thing this feels like some sort of a felt thing but it's really thick and uh, yeah it just didn't uh, I, I couldn't make that work with this door maybe it works with the black and decker unit I don't know but with this unit uh, yeah it just doesn't work it, I can't seal the sides and if I seal the top uh, there are giant gaps left in between the sides and if I add the tape to the sides too then the top doesn't seal because the you know, sides are too thick so yeah uh, it, it just didn't work so yeah I use this uh, same t uh, foam tape that's used on uh, Voron 3D printers for sealing the panels for you know, sealing the chamber on Vorons and yeah it, it worked well so there is that I added um, ceramic fiber I think I'll put what it is on the screen right now I keep forgetting what it's called whatever that uh, nasty stuff is I added that between the outer panel and the inner, inner panel of the uh, toaster oven and uh, yeah, that should help a lot with the insulation there was more than enough included with the kit that's because I bought the convection oven kit not the standard kit but if I bought the standard kit then yeah that definitely wouldn't have been enough so yeah there is that too but since there was some extra I also added some on the bottom side I'll put a picture of that on the screen right now just that's under the duct tape I'm not going to remove the duct tape but yeah some extra insulation on the bottom side too which should help too and yeah uh, it at least it can't hurt anyway um, that's all done too I just I couldn't film any of that because that stuff is like really nasty and you know I wanted to do that as quickly as possible I'm not following the guide um, like uh, I'm not doing this in order according to that guide so by this point I should have mounted the electronics controller box here already but that's the thing we're going to work on next so the main controller this thing this goes in this uh, plastic box and um, you, know, you put the uh, frame around that too you have to drill a hole on the back side for wires that come from the uh, main chamber you also have to mount this other PCB on the side of this uh, like so and uh, you also screw it into the plastic with self tappers and then uh, yeah there is this servo motor here and uh, yeah you attach uh, another PCB arm to the servo motor this arm and uh, yeah all that is to uh, the servo motor arm will open the door and uh, let some of the heat out during the cooling uh, a part of the reflow cycle and um, to do that you attach this tiny aluminium plate to the door somehow again it, the instructions aren't clear on that mostly because every toaster oven is different so that does make sense but you just have to improvise as the point so uh, you attach this to the door and there is another aluminium plate that I can't find right now and you use that plate to attach this to the frame as well so this will sit somewhere like this with the screen in it and what I'm thinking is I have to test this to make sure if it it works but what I'm thinking right now is uh, have the display here have the arm coming out here and then uh, jam this uh, smaller plate in here and the servo can just open the door push this down so that's the plan right now that should be the last step uh, at least when it comes to assembling this oven of course we still have to do the tuning and whatnot and we will test the oven later in the video too so yeah uh, I'll work on this and uh, I'll be back once that's done I do have some things to say about the wiring in here too just waiting for the like finishing the wiring just so I can get a full idea about how the wiring goes into this too but yeah once that's done uh, I have some things that I want to say about uh, 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 wiring parts that are included in this kit. Not too happy about them, but yeah, uh, let me finish working on this first, just so I can get a full picture of you know how everything is. So I finished all the wiring, and uh, I also even run a test run, just doing uh, some calibration. So as you can see, I mounted the display here with the sort of a arm sticking out like this. This is not the intended. Uh, the mounting position and 
for both the arm and the screen. The screen is normally supposed to go here, the arm is supposed to go up like that, and you're supposed to screw in a small aluminium plate here that, you know, this arm pushes out, but instead I'm using the arm to just uh, push the handle, which also opens the door, and uh, yeah, mounting the display up here just, I don't know, it, it made more sense to me for this particular setup anyway, so that's how I did it. And I used both small aluminium plates on the back to support it, so that's mostly because the uh, servo actually it take in the east is an amount of force to open the door so yeah that's the way i had to mount it so anyway uh good news is everything is working really well as you can see the oven got a hundred percent score which is you know pretty good and uh, i'm also happy that this didn't trip any breakers because technically uh, if you turn all the heaters on at a hundred percent at the same time this will trip uh, breakers the thing is you're never running all the heaters at hundred percent at the same time which is why it's fine so yeah as i said it worked pretty well so i'll w let this cool down a bit more and just talk about the wiring in here so i'm not a fan of a lot of the wiring components for example on the ssrs i already mentioned that mentioned that they're crappy chinese ssrs but another thing is these ring terminals first of all you don't get enough ring terminals for both sides of the ssrs so they obviously meant uh, you to use just these on the ac side and just use bare stripped wire on the dc side which I mean, of course it works, but that's really not a way to do it. And another problem is these are uh, just for a thicker gauge of wire and they didn't work with the heaters on this oven. And before you say, well, they can't account for every single oven out there. Yes, that makes sense. What doesn't make sense is it doesn't work with the uh, uh, wires for the auxiliary heater, which is part of the kit. So yeah, uh, this is just uh, too big for that. I assume they included these because these have these larger rings, which should increase the contact area between the the metal part of the ssr and the uh, ring terminal but the thing is uh, you can't crimp these on those wires these are for a thicker gauge so i guess they meant for you to just solder the wires on these but you know that's really not a great solution so not enough ring terminals included and uh, the wrong gauge definitely a fail there uh, on the controller side there are a bunch of screw terminals on the back side for now wiring the SSRs into and that's another thing I really don't like because they mean for you to just uh, screw in uh, bare stripped wire in there without a ferrule and no ferrules are included so I used ferrules myself because you know that's the correct way of doing it but yeah they didn't include any so another fail also another fail is uh, this is a multi-core uh, core wire that's included in the kit which is nice ideal in theory this would let you just run one wire problem is it's short two conductors so i had to run the thermocouple separately and this is another thing i don't like this really doesn't matter because we're not talking about a ton of power here but yeah even though this is 20 gauge a wire which is thicker than you need it's copper clad aluminium which you know i haven't seen any single copper clad aluminium wire in you know ages i thought they just disappeared but they somehow found some cca wires so yeah uh again doesn't really matter because we're not talking about a ton of power here but why i don't like those wires is they're extremely stiff you know it's just a pain in the ass route which yeah uh overall i'm pretty happy with most of the components in this kit but really the wiring and the electrical stuff uh, yeah, there is definitely some room for improvement. Include decent SSRs, a real power supply, and you know, better wiring supplies, and this kit would be like uh, as good as it can be. But right now, uh, you'll probably need to spend a bit more money on this, like either buy some fair rules or whatnot, at least. If not, uh, you know, also improve, uh, replace the SSRs with good ones, or power supplies with good ones, or just buy the controller. Controller itself seems to be good, and then just source the rest of the components yourself, but the way it is, um, there are things that I'm not too happy about in this kit, but uh, overall, uh, the way this in works in theory, the controller, the servo arm even, even though it's kind of a weird way of mounting this, uh, it's a bit rough around the edges, like you have to drill the wire holes on this, wire and screw holes on this, for example, and things like that, but overall i think it's still a pretty good kit just not a fan of the wiring 
and uh, if you're getting a bigger oven like I did uh, definitely get the convection oven kit because you do need the extra insulation now that I gave this some time to cool down it's still kind of hot so I'm not going to touch it too much but yeah I used the wire rack that's included in the Breville oven so I didn't uh, get a custom aluminium plate that's the width and the depth of the oven I was considering doing that but yeah I just didn't want to wait for the delivery of this, this project already it took longer than it should have uh, so I used the same wire rack and just put the aluminium tray that's included in the kit on top of that and on the bottom I just added a bunch of RTV to you know, keep it in place but doing this like this using this wire tray does add some thermal mass it doesn't really seem to matter in the scoring but where it matters if it matters we'll see later when we test PCBs is well how quickly the PCBs heat up and cool down after that too so the written guide here says that uh, removing some of these wires might help so if if I encounter problems that's what I'm going to do but uh, yeah since the pit tuning and you know all that is complete now the next step is to uh, test soldering some PCBs and for that as I said earlier in the video PCB way did send some PCBs so let's take a look at them and then uh, we'll put some components on them and then uh, also do the profile for the solar paste I'm using because it doesn't have that you do have to load that to the SC card we'll talk I'll show that later in the video and uh, yeah do the do a test reflow with a few components and see how it goes and here are the pcbs pcb way sent for this video for me to test these uh, assembling these in the reflow oven this is a project i've been working on behind the scenes for never more uh, max and stealth max air filters uh, bme 280 and an sgp40 sensor on the same tiny pcb these will be on my etsy store pretty soon too if you're interested in buying these but yeah i want to test assembling these on my in my reflow oven instead of just you know ordering these assembled from china so yeah i think this will be a good test piece since this is an actual product i intend to sell and um yeah uh, it has a bunch of tiny passives or 402s well i say tiny you, you can get a lot smaller than all 402s but yeah uh, soldering these uh, without a reflow oven to me sounds like a nightmare i did a few pcbs like that so that's why i decided to get a reflow oven Anyway, uh, BME 280 goes here, SGB40 goes here, just capacitors and resistors. Yeah, uh, this is something I want to test assembling this, so we'll create the profile for the solder paste I'm using. I'm using uh, this Chipquick solder paste, uh, uh, 6337 leaded solder, theoretically that should be the easier one. And I do use leaded solder for my you know, regular soldering too, not just SMD solder paste soldering. So. Yeah, uh, we'll create a profile for that, populate this with a bunch of passives. I'm not going to risk putting the actual sensors on here for the test runs because they're kind of expensive. So uh, yeah, we'll populate this with a bunch of passives and put this yeah, a few of these in the oven after creating the profile and uh, see how it goes. But yeah, as you can see, I do have quite a few spares here. So yeah, thanks to PCBWay for sending these. And uh, there's a link in the description below in case you're interested in them. But uh, let's move on to the computer and try to create a, a profile for this solar paste. Actually, instead of creating a profile, I think I'm going to test this leaded paste 225 profile here. The, this chip quick paste profile uh, goes as high as 235, but yeah, I think this will be a good starting point and we'll have we'll tune from here instead since there's already a profile that's pretty close. Yeah, I'll just... Uh, paste some of those PCBs and place a bunch of random passives and uh, yeah, uh, cook them in here. So here is that first test PCB with a bunch of uh, passives populated and only passives populated but I did apply the stencil to the you know, entire PCB. But as you can see everything soldered pretty well. So after this success with the default uh, leaded solder paste setting, I decided to solder another PCB, this time fully populated. And while it did go okay, this SCP-40 just, uh, I didn't push it in place, again I'm kind of new to this, so this was, uh, you know, didn't solder on the pads correctly. Tried to fix that with hot air gun and then ruined the SCP-40, that's why you don't see the uh, top of the SCP-40 there. The SCP-40, the thing that has the, uh, you know, the name and stuff like that is basically just a glorified sticker on there. And uh, yeah, that's gone. Also, while soldering this, I observed through that uh, the small 
coal I left here for uh, observing how the solar base goes and yeah uh, some of those pads really didn't solder in time and um, yeah I decided to create my own profile is basically what I'm getting at so I created the profile for the solar paste that I'm using which is loaded here you do that on the computer and I'll show you how that works in a second and um, for that I just referenced this uh, thing I showed earlier for my solar paste and and with that I did a third PCB reflow today and here it is and it turned out pretty well obviously the pin headers I soldered with my soldering iron so you know, obviously that's not uh, assembly reflow, but everything else, the tiny assembly components, they're all from uh, baked in my reflow oven, and yeah, uh, it worked pretty well. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with how this PCB turned out, and I think the reflow oven will work pretty well for this. And here is the custom profile I created for my uh, SMD 291AX uh, chip quick solder paste. You can find some example files on the Wizu Controlia 3 website that you can download which comes with three example uh, profiles so you just grab one of those I grabbed the leaded solder one which was also preloaded on the controller as well so the first uh, profile we used to test the PCBs before I created my custom profile but uh, yeah I, I just grabbed that and uh, yeah you just go basically just go in here and modify the temperatures and the wait times and uh, there are also some global settings like you know the name of the uh, profile and then you know what, how to display the graph dividers whatnot you can also set the maximum temperature and maximum duty so this is a duty cycle so you know uh, yeah how much each heater will turn on so so that the, all the heaters don't turn on at them 100% at the same time. These Most of these are just the defaults. I just edited things that are specific to my solder paste. So anyway, you can control the door. You can control the convection fan if you have that. You can control the door if you have that. And uh, yeah, other than that, you know, you just set the, how this works. So you just, for example, heat it to 75 degrees, wait 15 seconds, heat it to 150 degrees in 105 seconds, uh, you know, wait, do that again, blah, blah, blah. Here, for example, the duty cycle is 100, 100, 100, but this is limited by what's up here. And I didn't change any of the duty cycles. These are the default ones. I just changed the temperatures and the wait times, and that's all I changed. And um, yeah, uh, you can see how it works in here. So again, uh, it's pretty easy to do, and you can create your own custom profiles this way pretty easily. But if you want uh, to find my profile, I also publish that on GitHub. So I'll link this in the description below. The profile is here and also the uh, PCB mount I showed earlier in the video is here too. Anyway, uh, 221 Vagos and that PCB holder thing. Just add VHB tape on this side and mount it uh, if you want it. I doubt many people do, but if you do want it, it's available on here. So uh, this video has been pretty long, but it's time for the conclusion. I've been using this reflow oven for a um, a few days now and I've soldered a bunch of PCBs with it the exact same design but you know soldered the same PCB over and over again and these are now also available on my Etsy store in case you're interested but anyway I did a bunch of PCBs and yeah I'm pretty happy with how it's working so far uh, I only had two failed PCBs one of those I already showed I didn't push the chip on the solder paste as much as I should have so you know it just drifted on there and I couldn't fix it with a hot air gun because I suck the other one I had a tombstone uh, capacitor resistor I don't remember but again my fault I didn't do that perfect job I also had some solder paste application problems again my fault not related to this thing but I ended up designing this stencil holder and that seems to help a lot like uh, yeah the PCB or the stencil they don't they stay in place nicely with that thing so anyway not, that's not related to the sol uh, reflow oven so I'm pretty happy with how the reflow oven turned out and um, yeah if you're interested in a DIY reflow oven solution I definitely can recommend this and as for the toaster oven that you use for a control your 3 kit this Breville oven seems to work pretty well too and I like that I picked this oven uh, removal of the door makes assembly a lot easier removal of the drip tray also makes assembly a lot easier I like the larger internal volume too and uh, the automatic tuning thing gives this seems to give this oven a hundred percent uh, points which uh, you know it means it's it, it'll perform pretty well so yeah and again yeah, it's been working pretty well now to be fair I've only soldered this one type of PCB and it's a small tiny PCB but 
I've loaded as many as five of these in here at one time and uh, I intentionally kind of spread them around so I didn't put them all in the center. I didn't go as far as the extreme corners of this but you know in this general area and yeah they all sold it pretty well so yeah I think this uh, kit is working pretty well and if you're interested in the refill oven kit as I said I can recommend it but as I said there are some things I don't like about this kit too like mainly the wiring and electronics the uh, crappy SSRs the crappy power supply and this thick cable the written guide also isn't uh, that great like you know it, this is there are a lot of papers in here which make uh, make you think that this is pretty comprehensive but yeah it's still missing some things and a lot of the instructions are in just you know they're just written which uh, if you're assembling something I do prefer like more IKEA style or Voron style instructions so there is that too uh, but yeah I mean it, it, everything you need is in here the website is kind of like zooming in on the pictures on the website is kind of difficult too because if you click on a picture it loads that picture in a new page it doesn't just open that picture in the same page in a you know, larger window reminds me of the old internet but uh, anyway you know it works um, the instructions will make you a bit frustrated as you follow these but still almost every inf bit of information you need is on here so at least there is that and I you know I know uh, writing instructions can be really difficult I try to write instructions for my PCBs on my github pages and um, you know they're just a single PCB the instructions are usually just about flashing the PCB and even that takes a long time so I know how difficult it is to write instructions overall I still like this kit there are some things that are a bit rough around there just like uh, having to drill holes for wires on this or banding aluminium the aluminium plates that are included in the kit could have some holes pre-drilled to make life easier. This box could be 3D printed, which actually would be cheaper for them too. Like but these kind of boxes kind of cost a lot and this is also pretty thick plastic. So having that 3D printed with the right holes would be easier and it would be cheaper for them. But again, I think this is a bit of an older kit. It really feels that way. The controller in here, for example, it really feels like they just took an Arduino when prototyping and you know build it around that and then just designed their custom PCB down the line and uh, you know some things feel a bit old school but anyway everything works so that's not really anything worth complaining about. If you want a good DIY reflow oven solution though I definitely can recommend this kit and uh, it'll be linked in the description below but uh, that's it for this video I hope you enjoyed it if you did please leave a like down below and uh, stay tuned for the next War on 2 video if you're interested in more if you're more interested in 3d printing content now that I have these sensors soldered and I also have my Nevermore Max 2 controller PCBs tested and published on GitHub too. I can finally finish my Nevermore Max 2 air filter, which will be in the next War on 2 video, so definitely stay tuned for that, but uh, which should be next week. So, yeah, anyway, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.